Okay. Good afternoon or good evening, everybody. Welcome to this new live online talk from the European Union project, How Far Is Now? My name is Luc, Luc Lorfev. I'm a music journalist from Belgium and I will be your guide during the next 45 minutes. Uh, first, thank you to be part of this great project and welcome everybody now to, who's watching us on Facebook. Just click me a second. Okay. Uh, before talking together about your musical expectation, uh, I would like to recall you some guidelines of this fantastic project, How Far Is Now? As you know, uh, this is a project supported by the European Union and it concerns the cooperation between four different music venues in Europe and exchanges uh, between artists from these uh, four different European countries. There are two East countries, Poland and Ukraine, and two European West countries, the Netherlands and Belgium, Belgique. The four venues are Mezzanine in Ukraine, Firlech in Poland, Podium Asterix in the Netherlands, and last but not least, the Belvedere in Belgium. Uh, great news, uh, our far is now has got 278 different applications from bands or solo artists. And of course, there was a selection and you are the lucky ones. There are 12 artists or bands from these four countries. And uh, last but not least, as you also know, uh, besides this online talk, this online chat, uh, all the artists all of you have the opportunity to record a live video uh, stream, also broadcast it live on Facebook. After this chat, just after this chat, we can watch the first live set premiere from the overview effect uh, from Poland. And the three next weeks, uh, we will see the live set from Sophistication from Ukraine. Geo from the Netherlands and Cedar Twins from Belgium. So congratulations, all of you. Sorry, I'm talking too much. I just shut my mouth now. And maybe uh, I suggest you can introduce yourself, giving your name, what country you are from, and maybe a, in a, a description in a few words about your musical project and your expectation. Uh, ladies first, we can start with you, Sophia. Hi, Sophia. Hi, hi, hi. Okay. I, I wanted you to tell me that I want to be first, maybe. So yeah, uh, I'm from Ukraine. My name is Sofia, and I have a, like a solo project called Sophistication, which is always about not only me, but the musicians I like to play or collaborate with during making my albums, but usually I do it by myself uh, with all the notes. It's quite minimalistic sound. I play guitar and I, uh, and I sing. So I call it in a way a city meditation because it's a rather uh, repeating patterns of the guitar and it's a voice that's like flowing through these patterns and maybe some kind of electronic stuff or field recording, but only to decorate this like patterns. So it's a pretty minimalistic sound that like uh, made by me or sometimes by other people, but usually by me. So that goes like that. And you, you write uh, and you uh, compose the music of your songs. Yeah, 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 I do both. And I usually start with uh, like guitar patterns and then I write the text and the texts are usually very important parts of the songs because they have the most like uh, the most important content of the song. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Sofia. Uh, Michal? Hi. Hi, my name is uh, Michael. I'm from Poland and I represent uh, the Overview Band, uh, the Overview Effect. Uh, and we, uh, we were formed uh, two years ago. Uh, at the moment, we play uh, with uh, nine people. 
Um, and our music is uh, uh, it's a really uh, big mix of, of uh, different styles. Uh, we've got uh, we've got uh, trumpet and two saxophones. Um, uh, I play guitar. We have also piano uh, uh, and bass. Um, so the um, uh, the, the uh, gig uh, and show in um, uh, in uh, Firlay in Wrocław was the, the the first big gig uh, in our short career, um, and it was a big pleasure for us to to take part in this uh, in this show. Uh, it was uh, really uh, professional, uh, and uh, we can't wait to see to see the video today uh, from uh, from Firlay. Yeah? We are very curious about it, but you have just released an album or an EP? Yes, uh, we uh, we are going to release uh, LP uh, this Friday. We have a concert uh, in our uh, hometown. A really party. Uh, yeah, uh, I've got uh, CDs uh, and also the vinyl. Wow. We are proud that we have uh, that we nice really cover. have vinyl also. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, it's uh, made by David Ryski, uh, the the, uh, the the Polish artist, uh, and we have a gig on Friday. Uh, so if you, if you have time, you can you can come to Ostrzeszu in Greater Poland uh, and see us. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. Uh, journey, journey. Sorry? Yeah, uh, Jorne. Yeah, it's a bit Jorne, sorry. Jorn is also fine. I Jorn, think. okay. <laughs> Might be easier. Um, yeah, my name is Jorne. I play in uh, Geo, uh, band from the Netherlands. And um, yeah, we make a mixture of weird funk, a bit of post punk, and, and no wave. We're really inspired by, by bands from these uh, genres. And yeah, I think we make kind of primitive music, uh, kind of emotional music, which is quite atonal. And um, yeah, I think it's quite experimental. We, we, we're trying to play with that. Okay. And you, you have already an album, an EP? Uh... Yeah. Uh, we just released uh, our EP uh, last month, at the end of August. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird because we started uh, the end of 2019 with rehearsing, so we haven't played a show yet because of, uh, of uh, Corona. Um, so it was also quite weird to already record a video session and bring out an EP without having played a, a show. We all have played in different bands in the Netherlands uh, be before and uh, still do so. Um, but yeah, we are really happy with um, with with the response and uh, a lot of people bought the tape already. And uh, yeah, in October we have uh, we have a couple of shows, so we're excited for that as well. Great news, Jean-François from Belgium. Hi. So I'm Jean-François or Jeff, whatever. Uh, and I represent Cellar Twins. So uh, Cellar Twins is a rock band from Belgium. Uh, we started in 2014. And uh, since then, in 2017, we released the first EP of five tracks. And then more recently, by the end of 2019, we released our first uh, full-length album, which is called Duality. It's a... Uh, on most streaming platform. I have it around here. Looks like this. Okay. And um, and yeah, so now we're working on some new songs, but we've been working on new songs for a few months now. Uh, some of them are already recorded and um, yeah, things are going well. We had a few nice gigs recently, but some upcoming gigs we had just got canceled due to COVID, but you know, you know how it is, I guess. <laughs> so um, yeah. And I have one question for you, sure. Jeff, uh, because I saw uh, you come from Belgium and you have a deal with an uh, Italian label. Options. Exactly. Yeah. Why an Italian label? Well, we, um, when we, the thing is, 
regarding our album, first we released it by ourselves and we had hired a PR to do the, the promotion for us. And um, he was kind of enthusiastic about the, the record and he said, yeah, you should release it with the label. And he, he, was, he was keeping insisting on that. And so we were like, okay, sure, maybe, why not? And uh, then we asked him, but who, do you have any suggestions? Do you know any people that are nice to work with? And then he suggested uh, Rock Shots Records. And, uh, and that's, how it go- that's how it went. And yeah, they've been quite good to us. So that's nice. So this is a European project. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Sofia, uh, I have one question for you. How did you find out about this European project of Far East Now? And what are your expectations with this project? So I found out because of the Ukraine Music Experts organization from Ukraine. Uh, I follow them, I follow their activity because they were one of the prominent forces that help musicians to, to build these bridges with the international colleagues and organizations. And from their page, I knew it. Uh, so I decided that I want to apply because I wanted to um, to find the people who make music as well as, well as me here and to, to connect maybe to collaborate or to find out and to show my music because I found that I'm ready to show it like more than to the people in Ukraine. Mikhail, uh, what are your expectations uh, with this collaboration of Far East North project? To be honest, I don't know because it's, uh, it's really something new for us, but uh, something uh, excited. Uh, I, I think that the, 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 the main thing is that we can show our, uh, our music uh, and share and share it uh, and find out maybe some, some new, new band, some, uh, some new culture. It was a surprise to be uh, selected for this project. Yes, it, it was a huge surprise for us. We, we didn't believe. Uh, we, we just sent out the application, uh, but nobody believed that <laughs> that uh, it, it can be uh, it, it can happen. Yeah. And and what about you, uh, Yoni? You're from Groningen. There's a big Europe festival, uh, the Eurosonic Festival, mm-hmm. but you 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 had the chance, the opportunity to be part of this new uh, Europe brand project. What are your expectations? Um, yeah, we are already very, very excited that we got the opportunity to to, uh, to record this and do this and, and show it on a broader platform. And uh, I think it's really exciting that, that a lot of these underground venues are collaborating uh, together and that also you now get in touch with bands from East European countries where uh, you don't often get in touch uh, with and vice versa. So it's, I think it's really interesting to exchange experiences and, and, and stories and yeah, see what other people are, are making of it and, and are, uh, what kind of music they are making. So yeah, that's why I'm excited about it. And, and what about you, Jeff? Uh, yeah, pretty much the same thing. Actually, it's uh, it's nice to to just hear what other people do and uh, also where and how they do it. Because sometimes it just it's just different, and you can always pick up some good ideas or whatever. So it's a good thing. And also just just meet people because uh, I guess in this business it's all about networking. So um, yeah, yeah. Uh, a question for everybody: as musician, as an artist, what specific help, what practical help do you expect from an institution like the European Union? I can go if you want. (laughs) Yeah, go. Okay. Uh, So I think, well, I think this kind of project actually is quite a good thing because it's um, it's kind kind of like a nice step up compared to what we do so far and um and yeah just getting getting more exposure i guess is uh is the main thing and this i think will do it in the end so yeah i think it's a, a good point 
Sophia? Yeah. Uh, I think that's uh, about the same thing I told that to be like the bridge for the people from di from the musicians from different countries to be like a medium to help to know each other to connect with each other and with the cultures and with the specifications of the cultures and music because uh, it's always interesting to know how 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 different and how similar we are and to be to be this bridge between us to to know this kind of differences and similarities for me it's like the primal role of the projects like that and uh, Mm -hmm. what, what kind of differences do you see between Western Europe and Eastern Europe? For now, I think it, uh, it changes, but I think that uh, the lack of the communities, because in, in, for example, in Ukraine, we have a couple of communities of the musicians and musical industries, but, but it's only a couple of them. And I think in, in Western Europe, it's more developed Thing, that you have different kinds of style genres but for us especially for the independent musicians it's only about a couple of communities which make all the things happen so i think it takes the time for us to to make more of these communities that have different stuff but for the western europe it's more developed thing i think i guess thank you thank you sofia uh, who among you has already played outside your borders, outside your country? No, me no. Really? Um, you? Yeah. Not, not within this uh, confines of, of, of what we call Geo, but with other bands, we've, we've played some, some international uh, shows. So Where? Could, could, could you share your experience to, to our colleagues, yeah, to, to, to our friends? Um, what kind of experience was it? It was just for fun or just to explore new uh, markets? Uh... Yeah, both. Because, and I don't think I'm the best example to ask of maybe some of my band members, but um, of course it starts with, 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 with fun and, and exploring how far you can get with your, uh, your, your passion in a way. And it's always very excited if, if people... Uh, in other countries, listen to you to your music. Let alone uh, give you the opportunity to uh, to play there. And um, uh, yeah, I think the experience of playing shows in every country is also completely different. Again, maybe with a different audience, with different venues, but also different cultures. And I think that's also something really, really interesting uh, about playing shows elsewhere. Is also meeting new people and new views on not only music but in the world on the world in general yeah mm -hmm. there, there is like a, a meet uh, with the band different musician in the same car with the the drum kit on your head uh, no money just a, a few euros to eat hamburger there are funny stories about this experience here on uh... No, not that I can think of. I think it's, okay. it's also kind of ro romanticized uh, touring in a way. Sometimes it can be really exciting, but it, if you're driving for a long while, it's also kind of boring. Um, but you yeah, have to to yeah. To, uh, yeah to enjoy to yeah it's a, it's a, it's a, an experience that you share together, which is interesting. Okay, uh, we we all know that. Uh, for a musician today, playing life is very important as an artist, but also for economic reasons. Uh, there was the pandemic, of course, but I, I would like to ask each of you, how is it going in your country with the local scene, with the venues, with the music venues? What kind of collaboration? Is it easy for you to find a concert, to find a gig? To, to play in a festival in your own country. L let's share our different experiences. Uh, maybe Jeff to start. Okay. Um, you mean specifically about the pandemic? No, no. Uh, normal situation. Uh, normal you are situation. in Belgium. You have a band. You want to play live. Uh, are there opportunities to play live in Belgium? It's small venues in festivals, blah, blah, blah. With, well, the, the, with the musical style you play. Mm -hmm. I 
Um, actually, I think there is really no common rule. It always depends where you go and where you ask because sometimes you can ask a thousand times to some people and they will, for example, never answer your, your calls, your emails, or whatever. But sometimes they just answer, answer straight away and they are very positive and then you get to play somewhere and it's very nice. And then but you can you kind of have to build from there. You know, it's like um, creating, as I said earlier, it's like creating a network actually. It's um, and the more you have it, the more you are able to find opportunities elsewhere. So, but when you start from scratch, it can it can be a bit daunting at first because then you you're just on your own. I mean, it depends if you already have contacts at first. But for example, we didn't, and so we had to to create this hole by ourselves with uh, with no real support behind us. And so that was uh, yeah. Sometimes it's hard. But um, if you keep, I guess if you keep pushing and you keep trying and you do your best, then it works step by step. Uh, you, you know the, the Belvedere in Namur? You're yes. from Namur, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And we played there. Could, could you explain to, to our friends what kind of venue is it, uh, the, the Belvedere? Uh, it's, uh, I guess it's... Uh, I don't know, 200, 250 people venue, I guess, something like that. Uh, it's the, the, the stage is nice. It's well, uh, well organized. It's not, it's not super big, but it's clearly big enough. And, um, and yeah, there is a, there's a long bar next to the, <laughs> next to the, to the, the place. And With we have a very nice view. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. But you have a nice view because you're on the top of the citadel. So if you go out on the, I don't know how you call that place outside, but you kind of have a nice uh, panorama. And that's, that's always nice. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, okay. Jorn, uh, what is your point of view of the musical scene in the Netherlands? Um, yeah, I've, I've, I lived in, in Groningen for a long while and I just moved to, uh, to Amsterdam and um, so I can tell you something about my experiences in Groningen. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we have a really close community of, of, of artists and musicians that really uh, support each other in, well, which, which in something that, that's not really a big city. So um, yeah, in a way you try to, to stick together. And um, yeah, there's also, uh, what I think is really interesting is that there's always some kind of collaborations happening between artists and musicians that are working or living in uh, in Groningen, and um, yeah, that made it for us fairly easy to to also sometimes play a show, an underground show in in, uh, in Groningen, because yeah, you often know people that are involved in uh, in these pop stages. I think Vera is is one of the the most common and well-known uh, examples uh, of it. Um, so, but it, yeah, it dif differs per, per city. I think in Amsterdam, it's more spread out. And of course I have some friends in Amsterdam, but I can't really say a lot about the, the community here in a way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as Jeff said, uh, network is really, is, is everything in a way is it, if you know people or you have, yeah, you have good context, then it make, makes it easier for yourself to, to play some shows in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. and, and with your mix of uh, punk, funk, jazz, uh, are you ready to, to play in the podium Asterix? It's not in Amsterdam, it's in... Uh, um, it's kind of yeah. maybe. Do you know the place? Yeah, I've been there a couple of times. Uh, Leeuwarden is quite close to uh, Groningen. And uh, so I've been there for a couple of shows, but they um, don't have a stage at the moment. So it makes okay. it kind of difficult. Uh, they were, uh, they had a stage in a former uh, jail. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> uh, which was, uh, which is a really cool, uh, cool place. And they now reformed it to, I think, apartments and a library, and there's no place for the for uh, Asterix anymore. So I'm not sure what the status is on that because I think they just left a couple of months ago. So, 
but yeah if it would be there then i would be really excited to play there of course yeah mm. and uh what about the musical scene in ukraine sofia tell me more about this musical scene whoa <laughs> <laughs> This is such a broad uh, uh, question, but I will try to tell you something. As I told you, it's, it's always about the communities, and I'm happy that I, I know these communities, so uh, I have like no problems, in a way, no problems to, to know where to play and to know where I can listen to the music. And luckily, if not that much is uh, happening, that it could be, but uh, still, We have a lot of uh, jazz musicians, electronic musicians, uh, folk, even a couple of folk as me, uh, musicians uh, that play pretty minimalistic sound. So and I would say that it's a pretty diverse. Uh, you can find almost everything, even though it can be in a small venue, but I think it's getting even more and more open since there is a uh, much more support from the communities inside the communities. So, um, yeah, I think it's a quite wide range to choose to listen and it's it's getting even more and more wider. And, and do you know the, the mezzanine? Of course, yeah, I knew it even before, right, I guess, when they started because it was one of the places that had my kind of music hosted. Okay. Uh, as a solo artist, uh, you are, it, it's you, your voice, a guitar, maybe a keyboard, or uh, is it more easy to find a gig in a small venue, do you think? Yeah, yeah, for because sure. It, for sure it is because it's a pretty simple setting. And I don't, at the start, I guess I don't, I didn't even need kind of a microphone or something because I, okay. I could organize the concerts even in the small galleries with the white walls because the acoustic was amazing. I didn't even need nothing for people like for 30, 50 people. It was enough to hear me this way. So it was pretty simple and still simple to organize the concert of the musician like me, like a solo. So yeah. And, and are you ready to, to play everywhere in your country? Uh, as a super act of a uh, metal band, for instance, or? <laughs> I'm not sure because you know that still I'm very connected to the small venues because of the kind of the music. It's a pretty, really, like I said, it's pretty minimalistic and it's super intimate. So it doesn't suit the stadium, you know? Uh, that's why it's always, uh, for me, it's a challenge, but I like this kind of challenge to find the new location that could be perfect for me to play and I think for now I really think for a couple of years to play in some kind of old church or something like that because for the folk music is the best play to because the acoustic is like you're, yeah. you're becoming divine so so yeah uh, Michael what, what yeah. about your experience in Poland in the musical scene yeah we have a lot of possibilities to to play uh, and play Great. and listen uh, in, in All, uh, all places, beginning from uh, big festivals, uh, then the smaller festivals, clubs, uh, pubs. Uh, um, there are really a lot of places, especially when you uh, when you know with other musicians in Poland. That there is uh, there is easier to, to arrange a gig uh, in their uh, town. Uh, last years uh, there is a um, There is a time for songwriters in Poland. Yes, we have a uh, we can see a, lo a lot of gigs uh, of songwriters uh, because they, they they can play also in libraries and in flats, uh, uh, and we we can see um, um, uh, concerts in, in in houses. Yeah, not in clubs, uh, and, and even in, in pandemic time. Uh, We, Open uh, air life, you mean? No, no, that the uh, gigs uh, in uh, in private houses, yeah. Uh, okay, so, okay. So, so, And yeah. T tell me, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, do you know the the new Firlech? Uh... Sorry. 
Do, do you know the, the venue Firlech in Poland? Firlech? Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course, I know Firlech. I played. Did in, you already uh, play there? Yes, I have already played there with, uh, with uh, other band a few years ago. Uh, with Hugo Reyes, yeah. so so I know so I know Firle uh, very well, I think. And what are your memories from this uh, show you you played there? Uh, from uh, with the uh, overview effect. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was a big thing for us, yeah, with uh, with all the the um, the cameras uh, and other other bands. Uh, the, um, there, is, there were a lot of people uh, on this concert, so uh, yeah, it was uh, it was nice evening yeah? because there there were a lot of friends from uh, from Wrocław and, and nearest cities. It sounds good. Um, as I said before, during the following days, you will have the opportunity to present your music with the live streaming video organized in collaboration with our Far East North project. What can we expect from your live video, uh, Michael? Because you're the first yeah, one you to present. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can expect a little bit stressed musicians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think you can expect a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of fun. Uh, and I, I hope that, uh, that you can see uh, a really good gig because you know, uh, we felt really, really good uh, during this concert. Uh, the audience also, I think. Uh, so I hope you, you enjoy it. We are very curious about it. Uh, Sofia, what can we expect? Oh, uh, I think it will be super, uh, super summer, summerish one because we shoot like in 6 a.m. in the morning when everybody wow. was sleeping in the city and it was birds and it was like greenery. I think it was the perfect, the most perfect setting for the for the, for the music like plum I like mine. So I think it will be like really a, a, a tones of summer. Uh, of the beginning of the summer in, in, in the air. So I think it will be super pleasant. Experience. There will be a cinematic atmosphere. Yeah, for you know? sure, for sure. sure. Uh, was it a special gig for you or as usual? No, no, it was super special. Super special because it was, as I said, it was pretty early and it, it felt like I still dream in, a, in, a, in this kind of uh, greenery and all these things. So I, I really felt it. It was not like just for recording, but all of these four songs, I really felt them as I was performing for a hundred of people in the forest or something. So uh, for me, it was really one of, the, maybe one of the best uh, gigs for five people of crew <laughs> in this summer. So I really, I feel like the recording will, will be, uh, will, ke will keep that. Great. And and what about our friends from Gale in the Netherlands? Uh, yeah, what to expect? Well, we were very happy that uh, we got um, all the freedom we uh, we wanted to create our own, uh, own session. So we uh, we asked a, uh, an artist who was a friend of ours to also create a world and a setting uh, around us. And um, he also made a choreography uh, that we uh, that we did within the session so we did some rituals I think what we like to do is to create our own world which is a bit eerie and a, a bit experimental but also a bit primitive and we try to translate that to, to like a physical world and, and doing some rituals that, that yeah I think are working as a decor for the, for the songs. Sounds good. How many how many people are you on stage? Uh, five people. Yeah. So we have a drummer, uh, two guitar players, a uh, bass player, and a uh, percussion and uh, synth. And you will play, and so you will dance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's not really dance. It's more, yeah, rituals or something. You have to see it. Great. Yeah, I have one more question for you. The, the name of the, the band is Geo, Geo, Geo? Yeah. 
what's the meaning? What's the meaning? Well, I think for us, geo, geo means earth or planet, and for us, it refers to okay. primitive and to the emotional, and that's something that we see as, as maybe missing in, in some some kind of music. It can be kind of flat in a way uh, when we look at popular music, and um, yeah, we try to create our own world and tell our own story in this in this world. And uh, that's why we chose Geo. Thank you, your name. And uh, what about uh, Cellar Twins, uh, Jean-François, Jeff? Yes. Um, well, the live performance is going to be, how can I say? Powerful, I guess, I hope. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but I mean, it's, it's always a bit of a um, relief. You know, sometimes you accumulate some pressure, I guess, stress, whatever you, whatever you want. And then you have these times like these where you can just let it all out and express everything. And that usually feels very, very good to us. But also, I think people who listen to us kind of understand that, that, that mentality and feel the same. So it's very, um, you just let go of everything and it's very pleasing, you know. Mm -hmm. And how, how many people are you uh, on stage when you we are four? Four. Yeah. Guitar, drums, bass, I suppose. Singer. Yeah. And singer. Okay. Thank you. It sounds good. Um, I have a question. Uh, what kind of information uh, would you like to exchange uh, between yourself? after this live chat, after this experience uh, on this project? Do, do, do you want to share something all together? Your experience, your memories, uh, your uh, network, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah. I think for me, it's really, it's really interesting to see the lives and live performances and after that to have that kind of networking and uh, questions and the memories because for now we know each other as a people and i also heard the music of all of you but i want to see the live as like uh, this kind of experience that connects us to understand how how can it uh, go on Yona? yeah i think the same goes for me i'm um curious to see the, the sessions and I already saw some sessions of uh, uh, the last weeks and it's interesting yeah, for us to see if there's room for collaboration. I'm not sure if there is or if there will be, uh, but also share experience that could, could really be interesting. And I think the network could also be um, interesting, of course. It's good to know each other and, and see how we can help each other out in uh, in a couple of ways, yeah. Jeff? Yes, yeah, so, uh, I mean, besides the obvious, like, you know, the information about yeah, the name, the, the way to contact each other and everything, I think it's nice to have maybe um, some feedback from everybody after the fact as well, Yeah. just to know how it went and what was good, what was maybe not good. Because, you know, in, in music and in touring, there is no... Uh, there is no handbook that tells you, hey, this is how you should do things or not. And then it's, so I guess it's always nice to to use the experience of other people to just do better. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Mikael, what's your opinion? What are your expectations in the near future? So I'm curious uh, for, to, to, to see other, other bands. Uh, and other members and and see how to uh how it went in in other countries uh and maybe uh share uh some uh, information uh between between us between us maybe some collaboration in the future uh some common geek why not so we can see uh what will happen mm -hmm. uh, in the best in the very best of all worlds how do you see your musical project in six months or in one year? 
Michael. Hmm. It's hard to say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but have, you have a plan in your mind, yeah. or, or, or dream, or dream maybe. Oh, yeah, we have uh, we have dreams. We we want to play on big festivals in Poland uh, next next year, uh, and, and some uh, some some gigs. But we will see what will happen with the pandemic uh, time. Yeah, so it depends everything. Uh, it depends on Corona, to to, to be honest, and. Mm -hmm. and, and You, you have already a, a manager or a management uh, in Poland for your mm, project? No, we have no management at the moment. Uh, so uh, we arrange uh, everything uh, by, by us. Yeah, but do you think maybe it could be a good option for the future? I think, yes, we will we'll think about it. Yeah. Uh, But to be honest, it's not so easy with uh, nine members yeah, to, to arrange, to arrange uh, gigs, to, to arrange uh, the concerts yeah, and shows. Thank you, Michael. Sofia, how do you see your future? The next I think it will be the continuation of what I'm already doing. I will look for the new places where I can arrange this kind of uh, uh, concerts and uh, to make this kind of atmosphere and I, i'm working now for the new ep so i think in six months it will be already released and i will play the shows of that okay and it will be the the same music the, the same atmosphere or do you want maybe, to explore maybe new maybe it will change a little but uh, i i want to go deeper in this kind of uh, sound because i really like to, ex to explore it how i can how i can go deeper with this uh with this kind of uh, music so yeah it will be in a way similar but i will maybe add some new details and a new kind of sound thank you and uh Jorn, how, how do you see geo uh, in six months um yeah good question um I hope that we're playing shows by then uh, even more than uh, than we're playing now. We, yeah, we just released uh, the EP and we, we're going to see how uh, we're playing six shows uh, in October. Um, and we're going to see how people uh, respond to that. We got a lot of positive reactions and a lot of people that are interested to do more with it. So we'll have to see how it uh, develops. But uh, yeah, I think... We have to look at what we want as well. Uh, and uh, Yeah, we want to create our own path to the to the future. But first, we want to play a lot of shows. And uh, yeah, but we already have made, I think, 10 to 15 songs. So we are also able to to record things later uh, later next year. Maybe depends on also on how COVID develops. Because if we can't play shows, then We can see if we can uh, record some new uh, new songs. And Jeff, what are your plans for the next future? Well, in uh, in six months to a year, maybe we'll have, we'll be done with the second album because it's on its way. Great. But if not, at least we'll have two two new singles out, and this is going to be kind of a big milestone for us because one of these two, which is the the main flagship song for the new album. It's going to be mixed by a producer and mixer engineer called David Bendeth. I don't know if you know who that is, uh, but him, if you in, if you're into rock music and everything, he mixed uh, everything from uh, Breaking Benjamin, for example, okay. as well as uh, Bring Me the Horizon, Paramore. So it's a it's kind of a, a big collaboration for us, and we are very excited and want to show that to everyone. Thank you, Jeff. Um, we arrive at the end of this talk. Uh, I gave you the first word, Sofia, and I give you the last word, Sofia, for the second chat from our Far East North project. Sofia. Yeah, thank you for the for this talk. Um, it was really like really quick and fast. Uh, like the time went really fast. So, and I really thank you, and I'm really waiting to see all of your shows, and I'm. I'm really glad to know you personally, not only from the lives. So I wish you to have a nice, nice uh, premiere evening and uh, 
to to achieve from you what you want from this live session and the collaboration and etc. Thank you, Sofia. Thank you, all of you. And we are now ready to discover the live set premiere from the overview effect. Good luck for the future. And thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.